all over the place. I think, uh, and I've been on tour. I've been on tour. Like, it seems like every weekend I'm in another state. You sing now? What do you do? <laughs> now, that, that's what it seems like. Like, man, I was in Jacksonville, man. They showed crazy love. Like, all I needed was a microphone. I mean, the stage was about to collapse. Like, I mean, I'm So, what do you do on stage? You strip? Well, actually, the, you no, dance? No, 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 no. But, uh, actually, the DJ, he just called him to the stage to come, you know, holler at him. And then, next thing you know, he was like, you know, came out on the stage and he was behind me. And he was like, you know, Apollo's in the building. Everybody just, boom. Mm. And wow. It was like about 5,000 people there. It was crazy. For the past uh, three months, every weekend I've been somewhere. Like I'm hitting Arkansas uh, Sunday. I'll be there and then we're just going to keep going. I'll be down in Miami and then um, I'll go to Chicago. So we just Oh, wow. Okay. Up. You going to host straight from the A's party? We can. We can do it. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. You heard it first here. Apollo 9 is host straight from the A's party. Uh, you know, going forward, do you think you'll be a little bit more hands on? You think they'll be telling people Apollo needs a peach the way they did Peter because I feel like Peter was the one who you know talked about everybody put his foot in everything now is is it gonna be Apollo's turn now <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the reason for being outspoken is because like I told everybody you know enough's enough you know I I've been quiet I've been dormant for you know four years you know God you know allows us to have another season then you know it'll be five years but you know um at some point, you just have to say, you know, this is not who I am. I'm not this little puppet guy back here, and I don't have an opinion. Like, I'm very opinionated. Um, you know, I'm, I'm educated. I, I, we could talk about politics, religion, you know, um, marital situation. It doesn't matter what the forum is. Like, we can go there. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Here's... Well, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I mean, I, it, it, it was just time. It was really time. I agree. You know, just for me to speak up and, you know, I'm more than just a, a face. I know you've been criticized over the past couple of years as being a face, as being just a pretty boy, as being, you know, just an arm piece. So how do you take that criticism? How do you take, you know, all of the blogs and the talk shows and the whatever who, who constantly bag on Apollo? How do you deal with all of that? It's rough. It, it is rough. You know, it, you have to have thick skin. Um, of course, you know that, but um, <laughs> learning <laughs> the these people out here, I'm starting to feel like no one really cares for your betterment. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like. You know, they say, you know, all publicity is good publicity, but we are human, too. Yeah, I get and, you know, and it's like <clears throat> I try to act like it doesn't exist and then, you know, I'll catch myself sometimes, like I was telling you, I mean, I would read something and then I'm just like, how could... That's how, not right. How, how did they get that? Fathom, like, how can you think like that, you know? But um, one thing that really is obscured is that, you know, let's think about Phaedra for me. If I was uh, a deadbeat or if I was no good or if I was just a jailbird or whatever, you're talking about an educated woman who has many, many accolades under her belt. Do you not think with all of the accolades and all of the the, the, the fairment and the the, 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 the well-judgment decisions that she makes, you don't think that she can pick a man? Okay. So let's think about that. You know, people don't think about that part. Do you really think that this lady with everything that she has, that she would just be high strung on a power trip? No, like not at all. It's There's something that I had to offer. I think a lot of people want to believe that. You know what I mean? Because they don't have that. They don't have that intelligence. They don't have that career. They don't have that. So they see her and they see you and then they, they want to think the worst. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are unhappy at work and unhappy, you know, sitting in front of the computer. So they see these glamorous people and these beautiful guys or whatever, and they, they want to, you know, build their own story. So that's what I get from it. But, you know, I know it's hard, too, because I've been, you know, the center of a lot of stuff, too. So going into reality TV, did you have any idea that it would be what it was as far as, you know, the millions of people who know who you are, the millions of people who have their eyes on you? You can't even go get a cup of coffee yeah. without somebody behind you <laughs> trying to take your picture. Yeah, this this so. year alone has been a wild ride. I would say this year has been, like, it's iconic. Um, I never thought that, you know, life would spiral this way. There's someone that I'd take my hat off to, you know, we're in his establishment, is Peter. You know, I, you know, at first, you know, me and Peter didn't see eye to eye. Peter's a good guy. And um, 
um, you know, I would say I admire Peter because he, he told me a long time ago when this first happened, it was, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, and, and from, from an older gentleman, you know, sometimes you have to, that's why I said, you know, I, I, would, I would take, you know, guidance from a homeless man because mm -hmm. it, it could be, you know how to tie your shoe, but there might be an element in there. Don't be that person that says, oh, I already know. I already know. I'm mm -hmm. never that person. I know. You may know how to do it differently. I hear it. It's something different, right? Right. In the same substance. You thought you knew, but it's another way. So, you know, with Peter, you know, he gave me some advice a long time ago. And he was like, look, we, we need to figure this thing out and ride it out. And, you know, Peter has done that. You know, him and Cynthia, you know, I take my hat off to them because they, it doesn't matter what goes on. We don't know what goes on behind doors. Mm -hmm. But as far as what you see, they're supportive. Mm -hmm. He's, she supports Bar One. She carries that on her back with the TV show. Mm -hmm. It's always repping Bar One. Bar One has become an iconic, it's a brand, it's a name brand. Right. You know, and everybody who comes to Atlanta, they want to come to Bar One. They do. You understand? So same thing with the Bailey Agency. They, they carry both hand in hand. And you don't, it's unity. It's called the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, your housewife is you're supposed to be a spousal right. situation, you know. So for like me and my wife, or for Peter and Cynthia, they resonate with that relationship. They don't just resonate with, with the person. With, with the person, it's it's a combined, it's a couple, yeah. right? Because there's situations that arise, and there's other couples out there that says, "Man, that's happened to me before." Man, I know this. It's reality TV. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just I just think that you know. If I knew where we were going to be at this point, I probably would have did more things that would have been revolved that would have revolved around you know me and my spouse versus a lot of single entities, and that's not really you know that doesn't really help everybody. All right. So, do you want to address any of the rumors surrounding that? Um, well, you know, one, my wife has never taken care of me. Um, she's never, you know, she's been supportive, but she's never, you know, it's never been a financial thing. It's never been, here goes some money, whatever. Whatever I have, I've earned. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's other allegations, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm my own project. And so you have Night of Fitness, you have the... Yeah, we have, we have Night of Fitness. Um, I've tried to do, you know, halfway house programs. Um, I've tried to do asset recovery programs. Right now, you know, I want to get into uh, risk management, fraud prevention, try to, you know, right my wrongs, try to give back to the community. Um, we have a prenatal uh, DVD that's supposed to launch uh, any moment. It's already finished. We're just, you know, doing the, um, the photo shoot and everything, making sure that's good. Okay, so we got Night of Fitness. We got you on Candy Show. We got you, God willing, on the next season of the Housewives. Um, what other things can we look forward oh, to? From I, I want to jump into film. You know, uh, that show, um, Being Mary Jane or whatever, okay? I had a, a role in that that I was supposed to go and audition for, which I did. I didn't, I, I didn't, make, the, I didn't make it, of course. Mm -hmm. but <clears throat> who, who would you have been, uh, if you don't mind my... <laughs> I, I forgot his name, Lester. It was some dude. I, I forgot his name. Okay. Some suave dude. But my thing, my agent needs to tell me what they're looking for. Not mm -hmm. just next... Next, right. next, because that's the person who ultimately makes the decision mm -hmm. if you get the part. But the problem with a lot of people is the script that everyone goes for is not based around their character. You got to get your foot in the door. You got to find you a script that's based around you already. Right. What your persona is, what your demeanor is, what your likes and dislikes. You have to find that. And I think that was the messed up thing about it was you know for my first time you're throwing me out there but you know what what are you looking for right you might have pizzazz you might have you know saying a lot of style you might have an attitude but guess what when you're just walking in there you just da -da 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 -da, <laughs> hold on you're not putting no umph into this because you wasn't you don't told. know who it you exactly you, yeah. you wasn't told to put off you wasn't told What was your background? Where were you from before, oh. before the TV, before the this, before, the, before that? What was Apollo Nida's goals and aspirations? Um, my goals were set high at a young age. Um, a lot of people don't know I was set to retire, I thought, at 22 when I was 16. That was my ambition. Wow. Because the people who was in front of me, like, that's what they were doing. They were guys who really, you know, it was a milestone. Like, they set, you know, they set the level. They set the bar when I was 16 years old. So it's like, 
I've always been, you know, ambitious. I, I'm always up early. You know, I don't lay in the bed. I don't care if I have nothing to do. You're never going to find me asleep hmm. laying in the house. Like, that's just not my thing. I'm going to get out. I'm going to read. I'm going to I'm going to figure out something to do. Okay. You know, um, Apollo has, I come from a, um, a very parvish background. You know, my mom has OD'd on heroin in front of me. I've lived in the streets. I've been wow. homeless. Um, I've been, you know, tossed to and from from various people. Um, I didn't start school to the third grade, like literally my mm -hmm. first time. I probably went to school in the first grade for maybe two weeks. Wow. And I didn't go back, you know, and it wasn't until like I was living on the streets. It wasn't until my great aunt picked me up. I think I was probably about 10 years old, maybe 11. She just happened to see me out in the streets and um, took me in. And I come from a very racist background. I'm mixed German and black. And so the, 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 the Caucasian, the uh, Anglo-European side of my family is very racist. Mm. And so, you know, growing up, you hear the, 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 the N-word and, you know, you, you, you have low self-esteem. But for me, I've always, I've always just, it's like repellent. And people always ask me, you know, how do you do it? Like, just like what's going on right now with my current situation, how do you still smile? How do you still keep going? Because it, it's not real. I try to believe that it's not real. I have my own fantasy in my head that really lets me just uh, wonder and imagine and whatever comes my way, it allows it to just, you know, dissipate. And that's how I've always made it. You know, I've tried just living day by day and getting it through day one day to day, the next. And it's, one thing about, you know, when I was down the first time, I studied three religions, and I learned a lot um, through Buddhism. It um, basically teaches you mind-mood differentiation. And what it is is, you know, um, the heart is basically not real substance, and the mind is it's solid, mm -hmm. you know, so you have to basically use, utilize your mind in all aspects, not your emotions, not the feelings. So when you utilize feelings, it's basically a false pretense. Okay. And um, that's just how I that's just how I perceive everything. And I try to just just to stay focused and stay grounded on on a, on a higher power and know that there's a God and know that something else, you know, um, you know, is guiding your path. Guiding me and, and you know garners my whole my whole existence. So when people say, well, you have to be affected from you know your past or this that and third. Uh, psychologically, you know, that's why we have, psych, you know, psychiatrists because they will write write a script and say, you know, you are affected. But I want to believe otherwise. I, it's like, um, what is that? Uh, the zodiac. Your zodiac puts you in a realm of being. It says this is today's zodiac. Whatever you know, the um, the stars the cosmos, and cosmos. You know, so whatever the cosmos lies, and then here it is. This is who you are today. Why? Why, why is that, that true? Why does it why they... me? Okay. So let's just take, for example, you know, I'm a Scorpio, and it says that we're, you know, sometimes we're vindictive, or sometimes we hold grudges, or this, that. Well, that's malice. You know, that's not really positive. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to be that way? So I try to go uh, totally against that. So I don't want to believe that, you know, my upbringing is, will make me do psychologically they say that it does it it, it 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 makes you who you are but why can't i pull out the positive out of it that's all i'm saying i think you will though you know we, we, that's what everybody should do you i mean you're that. a smart guy you have a lot to say and i and, and again just like you said on the show i don't think that's been shown you know what i mean so i i wanted to do this interview personally i just wanted to get you know a, a little insight of who is apollo outside of all of the drama outside of all the negativity outside of all the you know the rumors and everything and just you know talk to apollo and see what apollo likes and wants to say so i mean it's a blessing i'm glad you did call because a lot of people they don't see this side you know um i went to new york to talk to some of the higher execs with the show they didn't even know I could talk. <laughs> so, you know, you have these people who are like, you know, sometimes blown away, just like the show that we did with, um, you know, the, the fellas and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that was a, a good thing to do. Yeah, you know, it was cool. So. I mean, I was very, you know, verbal. and um, Everyone has an opinion. Like, it doesn't matter if it's the right opinion or the wrong opinion. You still can voice your opinion. You know, that's what people fail to realize. Like, 